Welcome back to the channel. For this video, we're going to be walking through PyTest code coverage. In the first video, we went through linting. This included Flakegate, MyPy, and iSort. This was centered around code formatting. In the second video, we went through PyTesting. This was centered around making sure our tests pass to ensure that new changes we introduce to the code base are not breaking existing functionality. In this video, we're going to be covering code coverage, the final part in our CI workflow pipeline. What this is going to ensure is that a minimum amount of the code base is covered by testing. Ideally, you want to shoot for 100%, but this isn't always realistic. And in order to do this, we're going to be using a custom GitHub action I've written called pytester-cov. We're going to walk through this later on in the video series to understand exactly how it works. Now, before we get started, you can help me out a lot by doing a few simple things. Sponsor me on either GitHub sponsors or on Patreon, subscribing to the channel, liking this video and sharing on platforms you use like Reddit, Discord, etc. Starring the repo on GitHub and also follow me on GitHub. All these things help me out a lot. I really appreciate it. So let's get going. First step, like we've done in the previous two videos, you want to fork the repo. After you fork it, you want to go to code and copy it. Go to your terminal, and do git, clone, and paste. Once you have a clone, just cd to that directory. You'll notice I'm using underscore private, which is this one right here. The reason being is because we're going to be changing some of the code and pushing it to the main branch. I don't want to modify the public repo that you're going to be pulling from. That's why I'm using the private one, but the code is exactly the same. So to get started, we're actually going to run PyTest code coverage locally first without the GitHub action because there actually is a PyTest code coverage package already out there. Now you might ask right away, why do we even need that custom GitHub action that you wrote? We're going to see a few limitations of this package that are going to necessitate using a custom GitHub action that I wrote. So before we get started though, make sure you have two packages installed. pip install PyTest and PyTest-COV. After you make sure you have both of those installed, then you can run python-m pytest dash dash cov equals dot where you specify in the working directory you want to run the pytest code coverage on where dot refers to the current working directory and coverage fail under equals 90. So you're setting the percentage threshold you want this to fail on. Meaning if 90% of the code base is not covered by pytest code test that you've written then it will fail. Once you've done this click enter and we see it ran. Now we look through the files, main2.py 100, main.py 64, and the two test files 100. Total, 89. And then we have this message, failed. Total coverage was 89.47. We did not meet the threshold of 90%. Now let's walk through the problems we have with this. First, we see these two test files are included, test main and test main2.py. These are the files that we ran the test in. We can see this on GitHub real quick. Go to the test directory, go to test main.py, See, these are just test functions that we've written. They should not be included in the total code coverage because what it's doing is it's biasing upward the total code coverage. If we count 164, take the average of the two, that's not 89%. The second problem is that we only see main2 and main.py. If we go back to the repo, we have this temp folder, we have a main3.py. It's not being checked by PyTest code coverage. The reason being, is that PyTest code coverage by default does not search for subdirectories. You have to include each subdirectory manually in your Python code coverage statement, and this can become very cumbersome very fast if you're in a real world project with many subdirectories and many subfiles. The next issue is that we don't actually have an exit code here. Even though we have this red message telling us that it failed, it didn't actually fail. We still see four passed. So if we don't have an exit code, it makes this almost impossible to incorporate into our CI workflow pipeline. We definitely can't do this out of the box right now. We're going to have to do some workarounds to make this work in our CI workflow to actually give an exit code so we can fail the CI workflow pipeline if the code coverage is not met. And the final issue is that if we look at the individual files, we see that we have 100, 64, 100, and 100, and we have this 89. Let's say we change this 90 up here to 75. Well, then it would pass, right? Let's say instead of the total code coverage, we want each individual file to have at least 75% code coverage. There is no option to do this in PyTest code coverage. But using the custom GitHub action I've written, we're actually going to solve for all four of these issues. So now that we understand the limitations of the PyTest code coverage package out of the box, 
let's walk through the code and understand how we're going to use the custom GitHub action pytester-cov that I've written. Okay, so for the code, I'm only going to be going through one file, the python-app.yaml file in the .github workflows folder. The reason being, the other files are just simple functionality files, the main, the main two, and the testing files for PyTest. The purpose of this video is not to go through testing with PyTest, it's to go through the coverage aspect of it. If you want more information on testing, just refer to the previous video. So for this file, this is what gets run in our CI workflow. On GitHub, we make a push or pull request to the GitHub repo. So to start off, we have extensive documentation on what this action is doing. It gives you different variables you can set, the output variables, and the workflows that are being used. Here being the checkout action, published by GitHub, PyTester COV, published by me, this create issue action, which is going to allow us to create an issue in our GitHub repo whenever the PyTest code coverage is not met, and this commit comment, which will commit a table of the PyTester code coverage whenever we make a commit for our repo. So we can see in real time, after you make a commit, what the current code coverage is. All right, so to start off, first we give it a name. You can make this whatever you want. We specify the on with push, pull request, and workflow dispatch. This means that anytime we make a push or pull request, this workflow will run. This workflow dispatch allows us to run the action manually, which we'll see in a little bit. So jobs, build, runs on Ubuntu latest. This is just the container image for the GitHub action, creating a base image with Ubuntu. If you're familiar with Docker, this probably makes a lot of sense to you. If you're not, don't be too stressed about it. We set environment variables up here, specified by E and V. Environment variables are environment variables for this workflow file. Coverage single and coverage total. Coverage single refers to the individual file threshold that must be met in terms of code coverage. Coverage total is the entire repository minimum threshold for code coverage. We have a few steps. First, we check out the code. We set up Python inside this container that's running the GitHub action. We install some dependencies with Flake 8, PyTest, or requirements.txt if you want. And here's where it starts happening. We have the PyTester COV. This is the name we gave. And we have an ID, PyTester-COV. This is going to be important in a second. We're using the action that I created, PyTester-COV, and just using the main branch. If you want to specify a specific version, you can easily do that by changing this main to 1.2.4 1, 1 or something like that. But I'm going to keep it as main to give us the most recent updates. And we have a few arguments we're passing as well. The root directory, the submit list. We're omitting certain directories. We're omitting the test directory because this is one of our first problems that we're biasing upward the total code coverage. So by passing this in here, we're not going to include that test main and test main2.py and we'll no longer have that bias upward of total code coverage. We're omitting temp main3.py and temp main4.py. Main4.py does not actually exist. We're going to see how this doesn't cause any issues. And we're passing the coverage threshold single and total in here. And we're specifying them with the environment variables, which we specified at the top. This is how you reference them. You just put the double curly braces and the dollar sign in front. Then we check coverage single fail new issues. We're checking at the steps pytester.cov. Where is this coming from? This corresponds to the ID that we specified right here. If you change this to two here, there's a change to two here, and everywhere else this is reference. We're going to keep it as just pytester.cov. We're checking the outputs. So it creates a few different outputs. The first one we're checking is single fail. If this is true, then we'll run this action right here, create issue action. What it will do is we'll create an issue in our GitHub repo. The issue title will be this, saying the coverage single falls below the minimum coverage that we specify. We have the token, the assignees, the labels, and we have a body, which is going to be the output table showing the individual PyTest code coverage, which we're going to see in a second. And we also check, again, the same conditional, and we're just saying exit one if it failed. Then we do the exact same thing for the total code coverage. Again, checking the threshold and creating an issue and then exiting with code one. If both the thresholds are met for individual code coverage and total code coverage, then we'll fall to this line where we just commit the output table, which we were already committing before, but this time as just a commit comment. So every time we make a commit, we'll see a comment of the total PyTest code coverage table. So we can reference it very easily. So now that we walk through the code of the CI workflow file, let's actually see the action running. Okay, so to run the action, first thing to make a change, let's add another new line at the end of the file, click save, open up your terminal, get status, see the one file has changed, we're going to do git add, star, git commit, dash m, 
Let's do commit because we're not really doing anything. And get push. Okay, go to the repo on GitHub. Go to the actions tab at the top. Click on the action. And click into it. Okay, so the action completed. Let's walk through what happened. We're building the action, create issue action. We're checking out the code. Installing Python, installing the dependencies, running the PyTest for COV action that I created, and then it's checking if there's a single fail threshold if it wasn't met for all the files. It was, so this doesn't run. Same for here. The total threshold was met, it didn't fail, so this doesn't run, neither does this. Then we follow through to the last part where we commit a PyTest code coverage table on our commit. So let's go back to the code and we'll see that table right now. Right here in this message box, scroll down, and we see the table. PyTest coverage, 80%. We see the, the th two files that we tested and the total. So we met our thresholds. Because remember, our thresholds, we scroll to the top. We had 60 for single, 60 for total. Go back, 80 for total, and 64 and 100. So we met all of our thresholds. Great. Now, let's change the threshold of the single file code coverage so we fail. So we have 64 right here. Let's go back to the code. Coverage single. Let's change this to 75. Go back to the terminal. Git add star. Git commit dash m. Single file threshold fail. And git push. Go back to the repo. Go to actions. Click in. And click in. Okay, completed. But now we have a red X here. We ran the PyTest for coverage and we expect it to fail because we set the single file threshold to 75. The main.py only has 64% code coverage, so we expect it to fail. We see it right here. This didn't fail. What it's actually doing here is it's creating a new issue. It's not doing an exit code. It fails right here because this is where we return an exit code of 1. So we scroll to the top. We go to issues. We see our issue. We click into it. Single false below minimum 75. We see the file right here, 64. So not only do we create an issue, we also get the table here showing us visually where the issue happened. Remind ourselves in the code. This code right here is not meant to fail. It's meant to create the issue. This block right here, this exit one in particular, is what stops the CI workflow from continuing. So now let's go back. Let's change this back to 60. Let's set the coverage total to 85, because before it was 80. So now we're going to fail on the total. So we'll do get add star, get commit dash m, total threshold fail, and get push. Go back to the repo, go to actions, and click in. Okay, the workflow finished. We now see it skipped the single fail because there was no issue there. We met the threshold on a single file basis. We see that it failed on total because we didn't meet the total file threshold. It created the new issue as indicated by the check and it failed on total fail. We go up to issues. We just now see a new issue. Total falls below minimum 85 and we see a table again, just like the single except now we're specifying total. Great. So the next part, go back to the code. We're going to change both of these to zero. The reason being is because we want to verify that the PyTester COV action is actually running recursively. Because we go back to the repo, we go to code, we have this temp folder, we have this main 3.py. We have no test written for this, so this will have 0% code coverage. We want to make sure that the PyTester COV is actually covering this. So we go back, we set these to 0 so it won't fail. We'll scroll down and we'll remove this temp main 3.py. Click save. git add star, git commit dash m, test, pytester, cov recursive, and git push. Go back, go back to actions, click in. Okay, the workflow finished. You see over here, the single fill and the total fill did not run. We set both of the thresholds to zero, so it will always pass. But we see the commit pytest coverage table did run. So go back to code. Click the message box. Scroll down. 
and now we see the temp main 3.py included here in the covers table. 0% covered because we have not written any tests for it yet. Great. So we've seen everything in action. We've seen it with no failures, we've seen it with single failures, we've seen it with total failures, and now we've seen it run recursively. One more thing I want to show you is in this workflow file, you might think it's a little daunting because there's so much code in here. You can actually simplify things a lot if you want. So you don't actually need this new issue creation. All it's doing is creating an issue for you. If you don't want this to happen every time it fails and you just want the workflow to fail itself, you can just remove this. And same right here. So now you will no longer create an issue in your repository whenever the code coverage is not met. Instead, it will just exit one, meaning the workflow file will fail. And you can also remove this as well if you don't want to add a commit message every time you make a commit and there is no failure. So you can remove this as well. Selling this workflow file gets a lot simpler. I have added these things to this workflow file because I'd rather give you every option available than limit you. The last part of this video series is we're going to look at the action itself, PyTester COV. You can help me a lot by starting the repo by clicking right here. It's very simple. It helps other people find this action and use it in their projects. It also helps me by bringing attention to my profile and the YouTube channel to help support me. And I'd really appreciate it if you did it. All that's going on here, we have the PyTest, PyTest COV, the packages necessary to run this. We go through the optional inputs, which we covered previously. We have the outputs, which we went through as well, and then some template workflow files. And then finally, the license at the bottom. That's it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, just leave a comment below and I'll respond as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one.